You might say, well, is it true? And the answer is, it's not hell. I, I mean that because lots of countries are hell. And they're hell in a way that opens up into an abyss and has the possibility of a deeper abyss waiting latent within it, which will open up with the possibility of a deeper abyss within that. And that's what happens when that fundamental characterization is overthrown in a revolutionary manner or carelessly abandoned. And we saw that for all of us who are non-believers and no longer conceptualize the metaphysical hell as real, we saw the metaphysical hell realized in the 20th century many times. In case anyone having abandoned their metaphysical presuppositions was so blind that only an object lesson would suffice. Right? Nazi Germany, the, the Soviet Union under Stalin, the Chinese Communist Party under Mao, if that isn't close enough to hell for you, then I would say you should pray that you aren't introduced in, to something even worse for the purposes of convincing you about what's real. In the second God announces two things once he three things, four things once he creates man. He says, Man is to tend the garden. That's his purpose. Why a garden? It's a walled garden, actually, because that's what paradise means, walled garden. Why a walled garden? Well, a garden is a place of nature, obviously, and walls are a place of culture. And a walled garden is a place of nature, encapsulated in a manageable manner by the walls of culture. That's what your backyard is. It's a yard, it's nature, it has walls, the walls are culture. The walls you could think of as physical, as physical entities, as objects, but your, your lawn has borders if you don't have a fence. And your neighbors know where the borders are. And where are the borders? Well, they're in the imagination of your neighbors. I, I'm, I'm dead serious about that. The walls, it's so funny because you'll see people in the border between Canada and the United States. Eh? They'll get out and they'll step across the border. It's like, as if it's an object, as if it's an entity that's there on the ground. And people know that that's magic in some sense because the grass in Canada is only slightly less healthy than the grass in the United States, let's say. Um, it's easy to concretize that, but the, the idea of a walled off space in a communal society is a social agreement. You have your domain, your house, your, your garden, your backyard. That's enough cosmos for you to set right. And perhaps if you're competent enough to do more, you'll expand your garden so that you have more to tend. But you start with a walled garden of some size. And if you tend it properly, then the promise is that as your competence grows, so will your dominion. Man sent to tend the garden and to name everything that's in it. This is Adam. What, is it, what does that mean? Well, it's the Logos again. It's a re-representation of the creative spirit of God that makes itself manifest when time begins and when new things come into being. Our ability to name, our ability to speak is that in, in, in the microcosmic manner. That's what we're capable of doing, that's what the patriarchal spirit does, is name and order the world. And God brings everything to Adam to see what he'll name them. And that's a reflection of the idea that we have a created order, but man has a place in it. And the place is to organize it and to put everything in its proper place and to assign it its identity. And that's no different than the prioritization of attention that's part of the story. Name things in relationship to their function. Put things in place in relationship to their significance. 
in the hierarchy of being. Orient them, orient all named things upward. Sequence, constrain, organize, and order. The manifestation of the patriarchal spirit. And what does God decide? That's not good enough. Man lacks a helper. Man needs a helper. Woman's created as a consequence because the order that men produce because of their limitations is insufficient and something has to be introduced to speak for that which is not included. That's the role of woman. That's the biblical role of the woman. It's the biological role of the mother. You know this in your own household. Women bring the concerns of the marginalized to the center. You can think about that politically. And it's useful to think about it politically. All established human orders exclude. The exclusion causes pain. The pain of exclusion requires a voice. That's the voice of the Eternal Mother.